How y'all doing out there? This is Black Enterprise, and this is episode of The Black Effect. I want to get into this quickly. This ain't going to take too long. John Cena, we all know the wrestler John Cena. He's also played Peacemaker in um, the recent Suicide Squad, and he has a show coming up. He recently was in an interview with Jimmy Fallon, and he was talking about how he came up with that with his wrestling career and he had that where he put his hand, he had a wrestling move. You know how in wrestling that everybody has a signature move. He had one where he used to put his hand in his face and, 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 and do his hand over his face. Like you can't see me. And recently he told Jimmy Fallon where he got that from. We all know, you know what I'm saying? It's black men where he got it from. And he got that from Tony Yayo, you know, Tony Yayo, the member of G unit, was a big influence on, you know, uh, John Cena. Like, we all know John Cena was influenced by hip-hop culture. And that's what the topic of the video is, is, man, we influence the culture. Us. Migos had a, a CD called Culture. That's because we influence and we put and we influence the styles and things like that. And this is all across the board. We all know, like, don't nobody... I mean, back in the day, let me say this, like 20 years ago, there was a stark difference and contrast in the styles of black men and white men. Black men and white men's styles were not similar whatsoever. But because for one thing, black men had to cultivate their own style. They grew up in a country where they had their identity taken from them so they had to regain their identity and create a new one they had to regain they had to regain the remnants of their identity and create a new one it was a hybrid style now black men and women are the progenitors of all of the races so everyone gets everything from us so when you have but at that time 20 years ago it seemed like Europeans and European style had pretty much was at its emphasis. Now European style is pretty much meshed with our style. That's the thing. When you see it now, white dudes getting edge ups, getting black haircuts. You know they going to black barbers. They 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 trying to get dressed like black people. They got trying to have black swag. They have black atti black men's attitudes. You know they've learned. This isn't because some things are just universal, and it's not always just about race. But if you look at it, this has happened gradually, like I said, where we came we've came up as black men to where as we were wearing baggy clothes and things like that. Baggy clothes are still like, you know, are coming back in 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 a, in other cultures now. You know, they were super baggy clothes. Kanye West have kind of brought that style back. Like that's just a style of dress, but you had you back then you didn't have all black men dressing like that. You had right now you have some black men who have you know they they you have some men who dressing like their own like they self. They're not copying everybody else. Jediah, you you know what I'm saying? Oh, I think that's his name. That uh, common. I mean, you got a lot of people who just don't you know who dress normally or don't you know Jay Z. Nobody's. Uh, and then at the same time, you got people like Chief Keith. You got then you got people like Lil TJ. You got all types of the spectrum. But look at look at people who's copying. Look around and look at who's copying that style. Look at who's adopting that style and being a part of it. I'm a, now when it back to wrestling and um, to bring it back to that. There's been many wrestlers uh, of other uh, ethnic groups who've copied black style that's been a big thing in wrestling like look at the wolf pack look at the nwo look at the nwo as a whole they basically copied rap 90s hip-hop style that's you know and it was dope you know i, I rock you know and like because sometimes it's organic like you feel me like sometimes when it's organic we can sense that the brothers can sense it <laughs> like that's why you you get accepted as phony. That's why people like Eminem can get accepted, and then people like Vanilla Ice don't. You know we know when it's authentic. We look, and even Vanilla Ice is authentic. Like you know with it, the way he acts, and you know, 
But look at, you know, that nigga just totally adopted all uh, rock style. He didn't want to rap no more. He had a big hit with with, with uh, Ice Ice Baby. But he, he didn't want to rap no more. And we got to continue to do that, you know, as the black is in the black community, meaning that we need to hold our standards, that, you know, and make people who want to get things from black people, you know, they have to prove themselves. Like, we don't, we can't afford to be having infiltrators and, and phonies in. You know, same with John Cena. John Cena proved himself. At first, like that gimmick that he had doing all that rapping and stuff, man, I thought that was the corniest thing in life. But what, you know, but it was authentic. John Cena, he just told you that story about how his little brother, man, his little brother loved hip hop. A lot of white kids do. A lot of white people like hip hop. A lot, you know, when Ice Cube came out, Ice Cube had probably more white fans than black fans. Public Enemy. This a rap group talking about black is black political issues. Whole crowd see a white people. You know what I'm saying? So if it's genuine, it's nothing but love. So we don't have, you know, it ain't no thing. And that's why John Cena was able to be successful. You know, he started because I mean, he actually started to grow on people. And, and at the end of the day, through his whole career, he never was just fully. He was always infamous. Like, you know, he had a mixed crowd of people who liked him. But. He he persevered, man, and he always did his thing. But what I can say is, like I said, you had the Wolf Pack. You it was a time when uh, in wrestling, it was a time when Master P was in wrestling in the WCW. You know, it was a time when Snoop Dogg was 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 coming through, man, wrestling. They always have been synonymous with hip hop, you know, and and things of that nature. Hip hop and wrestling have been synonymous, and they still are. Like you still have elements of that with the women, women Sasha Banks coming in. You know, she had Snoop Dogg performing with her. Like it's gonna continue to happen. <laughs> but what I'm saying is for the brothers, like, and and for all of these, you know, when you hear all these divestors and swirlers trying to make it seem like you know one group of people is better than the other, it's like, well, hold on, man, you know. You can't, people can't get things from a black man and then try to, like, you know, try to act like that, that, that that's not the case. Like, don't try to act like you didn't get the swag. Or, don't, like, you don't know where you got the swag from, the style from. Don't try to act like you don't know who blessed you with the game, man. You know what I mean? And I appreciate, like, Tony, people like uh, John Cena just being real and not trying to act like he created that up. You know what I'm saying? Like, we know the real. We know what's up. But the thing about it is he had to do, when he was in it, he had to do the non-rhythmic version. Like, <laughs> like it was no way John Cena was going to be on the, actually doing the bouncing and actually doing the Tony Ayo like he did it. I mean, we all know we don't have the rhythm for that. No offense, man, but you know that. <laughs> Stiff as a board, bro. You couldn't, you couldn't only do that, like, just move your hand. <laughs> it would have been dope if you could have really actually did the Tony Yayo yeah, damn man. That shit would have that shit would have lit up. Your little brother probably could hit that hoe. But look, man, that's all it is, man. Just when you get things from us, we don't mind that. It's gotta be authentic and don't forget where you got it. So, you know, come back and pay homage. With this, man, you should have had Tony Yayo yeah, come out, you know, in the G-Unit the niggas come out with you or get them in an the episode of the uh 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 Peacemaker, man. You know what I mean? Something like that. Cause it ain't nothing but love, bro, but that was a funny story, and it just because it just made me think about all the other times, you know, in wrestling that that the uh, other races and cultures just took something from hip hop or took something from black men and and used it and implemented that. And it's all and it always tended to work. So with that being said, it's your man Nico B, Black Effect, I'm gone.